Good day to everyone. For this video, we are going to discuss the crime of indirect assaults, which is defined and penalized in Article 149 of the Revised Penal Code. Article 149, Indirect Assaults. The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 100,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who shall make use of force or intimidation upon any person coming to the aid of the authorities or their agents on the occasion of the commission of any of the crimes defined in the next preceding article. What are the elements of indirect assault? The elements of indirect assault are, number one, that a person in authority or his agent is the victim of any of the forms of direct assault defined in Article 148. Number two, that a person comes to the aid of such authority or his agent. And number three, that the offender makes use of force or intimidation upon such person coming to the aid of the authority or his agent. Let's discuss the first element. The first element is, to repeat, a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority is the victim of any of the forms of direct assault defined in Article 148 of the Revised Penal Code. And I presume you already know that there are two kinds or forms of direct assault. Direct assault of the first form and direct assault of the second form. Now, this means that direct assault, whether of the first or of the second form, must first be committed either against a person in authority or against an agent of a person in authority before the crime of direct assault can exist. Meaning to say, the crime of direct assault is a condition sine qua non to the existence of the crime of indirect assault because as you may have already noticed there would there would be no reason for the person to help defend or rescue a person in authority or his agent if there is no assault against such person in authority or his agent in the first place Second element, a person comes to the aid of such authority or his agent. This was what I was talking about earlier. Now, the person who comes to the aid of a person in authority or his agent may be a private person or a public officer. So, take note of the scope of the meaning of the word person. He may be a private person, meaning a private individual or civilian, or a public officer. But this public officer who comes to the aid of a person in authority or his agent must not be a person in authority or an agent himself. Because if the person who comes to the aid of a person in authority or an agent is also a person in authority or an agent himself, then the crime will no longer be indirect assault but direct assault. For example, X shot Y, a fiscal. Y is considered, or a fiscal is considered a person in authority. Okay, let's complete the sentence. Y, X shot Y, a fiscal, who is considered a person in authority, while the latter was interviewing a client inside his office. Now, let us assume that X knew Y to be a fiscal. And it is very clear from this example that Y was performing his functions as a prosecutor. He was in the performance of his functions as a prosecutor. Okay? Now, thereafter, Z who saw X shot Y, Z being a policeman who was in uniform at that time, 
And you already know that a policeman is an agent of a person in authority. So let's complete the sentence. Z, a policeman who was in uniform, tried to help Y. X likewise shot Z upon seeing that Z came to the aid of Y. So, if the person who came to the aid of a person in authority is also an agent of a person in authority himself, then the assault on Z or the assault on the person who was a policeman who came to the aid of a person in authority will no longer be or will not result in indirect assault but it will all it will already be a crime of direct assault why because the person who came to the aid is also an agent of a person in authority himself What does the phrase, who comes to the aid of a person in authority or his agent, mean? The phrase, who comes to the aid, simply means that the person who comes to the aid of such person in authority or his agent is attempting to rescue or attempting to defend or attempting to help or in the act of rescuing or in the act of defending or helping or has just rescued or defended or helped a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority. This must be the situation obtaining at the time the assault is made on such a person. What about the third element? The third element states that the offender makes use of force or intimidation upon such person coming to the aid of the authority or his agent. Here, take note that the offender is assaulting not the person in authority or the agent himself, but the person coming to the aid of such person in authority or his agent. How? By the use of force or intimidation. Take note, however, that the phrase makes use of force or intimidation, unlike indirect assault, there is no requirement that the degree of force or intimidation to be employed must be serious to constitute indirect assault. There is no such requirement. The provision simply states that the offender makes use of force or intimidation. Before I forget, take note that Article 152 of the Revised Penal Code states that any person who comes to the aid of persons in authority shall also be deemed an agent of a person in authority. How is this? Let us say X is a civilian who tried to help Y, a person in authority, who was punched by Z. The latter, upon seeing X coming to the aid of Y, who is a person in authority, also punched X. Since under Article 152, X has become an agent of a person in authority because he came to the aid of Y, who is a person in authority, the question is, what crime did Z commit against X? Direct assault or indirect assault? The crime committed by Z against X should still be indirect assault as expressly provided for under Article 149 of the RPC. That is, even if the person who comes to the aid of a person in authority that will still be indirect assault. Article 149, which is a penal provision, should prevail over Article 152, which merely describes under what circumstance can such a person be deemed an agent of a person in authority? Illustration of how the crime of indirect assault is committed. Number one. First, there is direct assault committed against a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority. 
Second, a civilian or a public officer who must not be a person in authority or an agent himself comes to the aid of a person in authority or an agent of a person in authority on the occasion of the assault on them. And third, the civilian who came to the aid of the person in authority or an agent of a person in authority is also assaulted. So, all these three circumstances must exist one after the other. The first one being the requirement that direct assault must first be committed against a person in authority or his agent before we can say that the crime of indirect assault is committed. There can be no indirect assault without direct assault.